There's a big mess going around on the internet and in Bible-believing churches where they fuss about the silliest things, call each other a devil and heretic, and split. That's the reason why I've come, the, when I've come to fellowship with certain people online, the more th then it's like the Lord always causes some kind of distance after that. Do you know why? Because there's a problem with people, Bible believers and onliners, where there's always this kind of, uh, when they have their own conviction and they force it down another person. That is something that you need to really look carefully in your heart and repent of. You might say, why is that? Because your conviction may be right to you, yeah. but you got to realize this. You don't know what else is in that person's heart, how the Lord laid it upon him or his or her heart. Yeah. And you better leave it alone. There's a difference right here with conviction and doctrine right here. Doctrine is something that is absolutely clear and plain from Scripture, and you're willing to bet your soul 100% on the judgment seat of Christ on. And not only that, how we know it's doctrine is you're not the only one. Come on, that's good. And it's not just amateur Bible people either. Yeah. It's Bible-believing men of God who prayed, actually dealt with people for years. Uh -huh. Then you know which one's a major issue, which one's not a major issue. Yeah. Do you understand? All right, now these are the two chapters that are going to be very important. We're going to look at Romans chapter 14. People make a big deal concerning... Now, there's one thing where people make a big deal. Here's one example concerning holidays. Holidays. Now, our church, we do not observe Christmas or Easter. We don't observe those days. So I'm sorry if you don't see a Christmas tree or a big lighting over here. The reason why is because, as some of you onlineers know, if you research that, a lot of it is something sexual, a lot of it is paganism, a lot of it is wickedness. So I'm sorry, as a pastor, I just don't have a good conscience doing that in my church. However, the thing is, is that there are other churches who observe Christmas. And there are other churches who observe Easter. Me, myself, I just simply say Happy Resurrection Day. No, in my church, I don't do egg hunting in our church. But in some other churches, they do some kind of chocolate egg thing for the kids to hunt on, etc. But here's the thing right here, is that this is, okay, with this mindset where people are trying to find something evil and pagan in a day, this is going to be, do you think it's going to stop right here? Now, let me ask you an easy question. If you're going to research something evil, anything that's evil or anything that's pagan, do you honestly believe when you look up the days, it's going to stop right at Christmas or Easter? Yes, sir. It's not. You know what you're going to find out? Practically, if not all, nearly every single holiday, you can't even observe. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. I mean, I've heard things where they were saying Mother's Day is evil now, and Thanksgiving is actually evil. And I think Thanksgiving is actually the most Christian one out of the bunch where we just take time eating together and praise the Lord. But if you research Thanksgiving, you know, there, there, are, there are beliefs out there where it was not actually of God when the pilgrims landed. It was mostly colonization and killing off all those Native Americans and etc. So you see right here, but then, you know, I've done some research. The guy who actually... The university professor who popularized that was actually a Native American himself, see? And then not only that, if you look up other university professors, th there's contradictions between them. They disagree with that guy. They believe that there was invalidated research, it wasn't enough, and they gave other evidences that contradicted that. So here's the problem. The problem is this, is that if your only evidence is what you are taught online, that's not objective research. You did not research all of truth. But let me ask you this, who did God give to you for truth? It's his word, and he's given you churches, Bible-believing preachers to help you grow in truth. Amen. So when you go information outside of that, that should be troubling. Hmm. So you think and pray about that one for a while. So then concerning these days, why don't we make a big deal out of that? Well, the reason why is this, based off on Romans 14, why don't you stop... Here's the problem. You, keep, you are infatuated with finding something evil and dark with the days that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. 
Why don't you try to find something good and godly? Why don't you get your mind out of the gutter and try to find something good and godly? So then, for example, I know that a great, a, a perfect example is Sunday. Sunday, it's pagan. It's pagan. I'm sorry. It is pagan. That's why a lot of people say, oh, Pastor Kim said it. Now we're going to observe the Sabbath. No, you're wrong, okay? You're wrong. Paul was actually angry at you guys who were pushing down the Sabbath on people. But anyway, aside from that fact, Sunday, that name itself, it's connected with Roman paganism and Catholicism. But you know what? God didn't make a big deal out of that, did he? Did you read 1 Corinthians chapter 16? They met together and worshipped on Sunday. Did you read the book of Acts? Paul, he did a church service on Sunday. God didn't make a big deal out of the days. You know why? Because the days, look at Romans chapter 14, verse 4. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. See that? So you have no right to judge another man's servant. Because you're not the master. God's the master of that servant. So you have no right to judge that sister or brother on what your conviction should be because you're not the master. God is. Yea, he shall be holden up for God is able to make him stand. Even if that guy is in the wrong, you got to realize this. God is the master of that person and you'd be surprised that even if he's wrong, God will still hold that person up. That's why it's best not to be careful what you say. Don't go against the person. You might say, how so? <laughs> the easiest example is King David. He committed adultery and murder. But you know what God did when his son Absalom went against him? See, David would still hold him up, and Absalom, he lost his, he lost his life. See, you better be careful of that, because you got to focus on how God is using that person. And when you look at that, then you're going to realize there are some things that you should back off and let the Lord handle that person. Even if that person's in the wrong, trust me, the Lord will show that person he or she is in the wrong. But if God's not doing that, then what does that mean? That means what God wants you to do is mind your own business, not, the, not that person. You got to look. Be, it shows me that you're more concerned and worried about somebody else's spiritual walk rather than yours. Do you know how annoying it is as a pastor to hear at church somebody pointing out some other spiritual problem? And then I'm like, well, you know, what about yourself then, you know? And do you know how tiring it is? I mean, do you know? I understand that fully. You know why? Because I'm the pastor who's used to pointing out other people's spiritual problems. So the Lord had to teach me a journey and a lesson on that. So I know that more than you do. Trust me, okay? I've been in Bible-believing churches longer than you, okay? I was, I was born and raised in independent fundamental Baptist churches, nearly all my life in Bible-believing churches, and it's not humpty-dory, I love you, brother and sister, okay? It's not, okay? I'm sorry, all right? I'm really sorry. It's ideal, it's one we strive for, but it's not reality, it's not realistic. Okay, look at verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day what? Alike. Alike. See, it doesn't make a big deal about a day. Christmas is not different from him compared to Saturday or a Sunday or any holiday. Let every man be what? Fully persuaded in his own mind. See, that's what God's judging. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. See that? So God, he, what he's judging right here is your heart. What you believe in your heart is right with God. So then how you observe the day, if to you yourself that day is evil, God's going to judge you by your heart and he's going to reward you for that. And if you observe that evil day, you're going to be in trouble with God. But this person might see that day as something that as just a normal day, like any other day. And that's what he's persuaded. That verse is fully persuaded in his own mind. So fully persuaded in his or her own heart that, hey, this day is just like any other day. So what's the big deal? And God's going to judge that person by it. And if that person violates that, then the Lord's going to judge that person. And when this person enforces his or her conviction on this person, and this person enforces his or her conviction on this person, you know what that is? That is not leaving it to God to judge that person, and God hates that. Because God, 
individually, separately, differently dealt with that person's walk where he or she knows what's right and wrong. And God hates it when somebody else, which is none of your business, butts in and says, oh no, this is right. When God dealt with that person for years and a long time on what's right and wrong. And you have no right to butt into that other person's business. What about food? Yeah, food too. Look at this. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. It's the same thing with food. I know what they put on hot dogs. You know why? You just look at the ingredients. <laughs> then you know, okay? It's no secret. Just look at the ingredients, okay? I know that what I know, I, I know about the things where they contaminate the food. And so a lot of it is just poison, unhealthy, what they put in our water system. And yeah, I know about the New World Order and the elites, what they're trying to do, hurting our whole world and trying to kill people. But you've got to understand this fact. What you've got to understand right here is that concerning food-wise, concerning food-wise, if you eat to the Lord, you eat it to the Lord. We had, we had a couple right here who, only eat, who are vegetarian strictly, all right? Did we Bible believers get all mad and force them to eat our meal? No, then we're sinning. Did they get all mad and force us to eat their meal? No, then they're sinning. Why? You read the verses. I don't have to repeat it again. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Yea, his own master he standeth or falleth. Leave them alone. See that? So concerning meals, don't make a big deal out of that. Don't make a big deal about the food. It's a matter of what they eat to the Lord. Look, l let, me, let me tell you this. During the Dark Ages, do you think the food that the Protestant Christians ate were healthy? No. What about the Great Awakening revivals? What they ate was healthy? No. But that was the greatest era of Christianity revival compared to Laodicea today. So they're spiritually better than you. Amen. See, don't judge your spirituality by what you eat, by what day you d observe. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Don't try to find anything pagan or evil out there and saying, oh, we can't observe that. Look, then it's a rabbit hole that's never ending. So we see holidays, we see food, and then we see marks and symbols. Now, you heard me teach about witchcraft, and I know that everywhere Satan has infiltrated, okay? But for crying out loud, okay, if we're going to judge by everybody's hand signal out there, then I'm a Satanist 20 times in every video you watched. I can't even move my hands at all, okay? I can't move my fingers at all, okay? Yeah, so you see the okay, you know, people say okay, you know, and then people make a big deal. He is the Antichrist. He just did a 666 right there. So... So you got to realize, uh, there's a lot of other things. It's not just that. It's also different hand signals. Just study hand signals by what Illuminati and Satanists do, and you'll realize, I can't move my hand at all. <laughs> this is supposed to be something communist as well, you know? And then you see me preach like this all the time, you know? You see me preach like this all the time. So you got to realize this is that, so you can't judge everything out there as something satanic. You got to realize this too. In our nation's flags, I know that there's a lot of things over there that you can find something pagan and, uh, pagan and satanic, but you got to realize this. When a person is looking at his or her flag, he or she is not thinking about something pagan or satanic. They're just thinking about their nationality, their culture. So for example, I actually have a little pin of a Korean flag on my chest, but if you look at that circle symbol, that's yin and yang. Uh, the Nation of Israel flag. I know that star, that's something that you can connect with black magic and Satanism, but you got to realize this, to the Jewish culture mind, to them, they're thinking about the star of David or their nation. So you got to realize this, to you, if you have a conscience against that, then don't observe it, because if you observe it, then you're sinning. But to that other person, he or she, between him and God, don't you enforce that judgment on them either, because then they'll be sinning. You might say, how so? Well, for example, Paul, he was uh, concerning about animal sacrifices. Paul was vividly against that, right? He was arguing right here, anything outside of that, that is satanic, that is wrong. 
But what did Paul do at the book of Acts? Paul, he observed animal sacrifice when he visited the Jews. You might say, why? Because Paul says, I am all things to all men that I might win some. So you got to realize this. When people are observing these things, it's just simply when they're thinking about others. And not only that, they're thinking about, so you got to think about this. What edifies others? That's the idea. And when you keep going down this rabbit trail right here, you're not, you're going to lose the power of edification. Do you know how I built up a church? By not trying to go like this with every individual. Do you know then, if I start to do this, trying to find everything evil or pagan about you, then you know what's going to happen? It's going to create a paranoia mindset. And I'm going to judge every person out there. And that is a dangerous mindset. Amen. How, why do I say that? Because I'm a pastor. I know what that leads. It's easy to judge as a pastor. It's easy to judge everybody's spirituality. Where's your mind at, huh? That's why you're losing fellowship with different brethren. You know why? You're not trying to look at this. You know why you always get depressed about church and then you quit church and get bitter easily? You keep looking at this at church. Amen. You don't look at this. You know why, brothers and sisters, that there's no unity? Because you keep looking at this. You don't look at this. See, this is, this is definitely a devotional topic. When you re keep researching this, it affects your spiritual walk where Satan gets you. You know what I do with people? I honestly focus on this. I honestly do that. I honestly do that. You know why? Because if I do this, I don't have a church at all. Don't you think I'm already kicking enough sin and wrong doctrine already where I'm small enough? Do I need to keep focusing on this one or do I got to start focusing on this? Let me give you the greatest argument that's going to convince you. Don't you think God himself can find anything evil or pagan out there and in your heart? But aren't you glad he did not do that with you and started to try to look at this in you? You might say, really? God tries to do that? Yeah. You know what the Bible says about the parable of the rich man who gave, his, gave up everything for the pearl? He saw something good in that pearl. Isn't that a blessing? When Paul said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. But God, he was looking at us as if you're a valuable pearl. Man, that's God. Here's another thing. What did the Old Testament saints do? They know their righteousness were filthy rags. Isaiah said that, the Old Testament. Solomon said there is not a just man upon the earth. But what those Old Testament saints realize that they can gain God's blessing if they mention about their good works. So you know what Hezekiah did? Remember all the good things I did for you, God. Can't you let me live a little longer? Don't you think God's like thinking, why would you do that? What about this? What about that? That's evil. That's something wrong that you did. No. You know what God did? He looked at something good and godly in them. Why don't you start doing that with days, your meals, your everyday life, and with people around you? It's so, you got to realize this. I'm going to say this, all right? If I lose people, I lose people. Because I care more about your spiritual welfare than me getting more popular. Amen. Let me say this. You got to stop thinking negatively, okay? I know, look, there's plenty of negative things already going on with politicians. But you got to realize this. Being in the office of politics is a stressful job. It's mind-wrenching. Because you know why? They're compromisers. They have to please everybody out there. You see that? They have to please everybody out there. I know there's police brutality, but have you worked as a police officer before? Have you thought about, have you worked as the president of the United States before? I know that those liberal scholars out there, they're just demon possessed and wicked as hell, and those Muslim people too, but have you lived their life, their culture? Were you born in their shoes? Maybe that's why your soul winning stinks. Maybe that's why when you're always around them, you always fight with them. That's why you always fight with them. See? See that? You better think about this church. How did I survive here as a pastor? Huh? How did I survive here as a pastor? How did I still keep this church going? And you know when I teach and preach, I don't compromise. You know why? Because I keep thinking about in their shoes. And that's why I've survived. Isn't that a miracle? Street preaching, we never got kicked out, not even once. Not even once. 
Have we been hassled by cops? Did they report us? Of course they did. But you know what I did? I keep doing this, thinking about in their shoes, and those officers leave us alone. You got to start doing that. So you got to think about their nationality, their culture. So how are you going to meet up with them if you try to keep pointing this out, this out, this out with them? How are you going to minister to them, lead them to Jesus Christ? 1 Corinthians 10, I didn't even read this. And this is the best passage, actually, on this one. So let's close it. I've got to close it right now. Look at verse 23. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat. That's referring to meats offered to idols. Okay? Asking no question for what? See, Paul knows this. See, once it hits your conscience, then he knows that's a problem. That's why it's best. That's why, why do you think God never gave Adam and Eve the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Because he knows the more that you know, then the more it's going to be a problem for you. That's right. See, God's not concerned about this one. He's more concerned about how you treat other people. It's not knowledge. It's love. That's what God cares more. It's not knowledge, it's love. Trust me, when you show love to other people, you're already a minority enough. You already hate speech enough. You're already hated by the world enough. You're not a compromiser, okay? You, you already proved that enough. Keep reading. For the what? Earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That's important to understand. See that? Just because Satan takes one of God's created things and makes it evil does not make it evil itself. You can't just reject it like that. Don't let Satan throw you of your joy what God has given to Amen. you on this earth. Amen. Take advantage. If any of them that believe not, see a lost person bid you to a feast. See a pagan feast. You can imagine the rituals going on. And ye be disposed to go... Whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience sake. Oh, has that food been contaminated by some water system right there? Uh, what day are we observing this? Is this offered to an idol? I see a star right over there that's connected to Moloch over there. And then you see that? Look at that. What did Paul say? No, don't ask question for conscience sake because you got to think about others. Others. But if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols... See that? Now it's plainly shown. The testimony is plainly shown. This is pagan. This is evil. Yeah. Then what you got to do now for your testimony? Eat not for his sake that showed it and for conscience sake. See, now because you got a conscience about it. Yeah. See? Now you got a conscience about it. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the who? Other. That's what the point is. The days you observe the meals that you eat and everything that you do your conscience it can't be just about you you me 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 what i feel you gotta think about others That's right. paul he was strongly against the judaizers wasn't he yeah. but he sacrificed himself by doing by joining animal sacrifices when he was strongly opposed to that you know why it's not thinking about his own conscience it's others Amen. let's keep reading right here for why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Mm -hmm. This is important. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the what? Glory of God. See, the thing is this. Don't, inf don't concentrate on these when you're doing it. Concentrate on these when you're doing all this. And trust me, when you do that, everyone's going to have different convictions out of this. And you know what the best advice is? Leave it alone. Because they're worshiping God rightly their way. Leave it alone. That's why verse 32, give none offense. See that? Neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. I hope that's an important lesson to you and you'll observe that one. Because remember, think about 
your other person. That's why some of you who've been so into online and you prideful Bible believers who started arguments and fights, you've gotten more and more lonely, haven't you? You've gotten more and more where you're not getting along with anybody, right? You know why? Because your mind's not on others. It's you.